Hey, Aster here, back at it again with another unscripted video because today I am going to talk to you all about my favorite character in Genshin Impact, Aether and Lumine. Well, I like the Traveler, that's what I'm saying. To me, Aether will always be the Traveler. I guess it's because that I chose Aether, so sorry Lumine fans, we're gonna talk about the Abyss of Bling like in another video. But today, I'm going to be delving into what I think makes a protagonist good. Now, a lot of people are going to say that Aether is a blank slate that's meant to be a part of the Genshin experience. He's supposed to be the fill-in for the player, which to an extent is pretty true. But I don't actually think that's the case. Usually when you say that a character is a fill-in for the player, the story itself angles towards a choose-your-own-adventure. A really great example of this is Undertale. For me personally, I can confidently say that Frisk was meant to be a blank slate for the person behind the screen to put themselves in the shoe of Undertale's world. But if you look at Genshin Impact's story, you can see that there is a consistent personality all throughout Aether's world. And let me tell you this right now, how much of Aether do you actually know? Out of all the playable characters, we have no idea who this guy is. We don't get the luxury of having five character stories in the back to explain this guy's lore. So we know absolutely nothing about them in the past. All we know is that they used to come from a world that was destroyed and then when they came to Devat, they woke up and the world was also being destroyed, F to be respect. So one of the reasons why I think Aether was a really well-written character is because despite being a silent protagonist, he has a very consistent personality all throughout the story. You can see that he is very helpful with other people and he is very, very, very sarcastic and exhausted due to everyone literally putting all the work on him. But you can also see that he won't shy away from someone that needs help because his backstory actually justifies this. He was told from a young age before they came to this world, the twins specifically, they were told to use compassion, kindness, and nobility in order to garner more companions. And while yes, I do think that he should be voiced, and by extension Lumine should also be voiced because they have really good voice actors, I do appreciate that the Traveler isn't as blank as a lot of people think. You can definitely see a consistent kind of personality. He's snarky, but he will help you. And I appreciate that. The Traveler, I think, out of all the characters, have one of the best dialogue written just because they don't fall into the trap of, well, it feels like an NPC. If you don't notice, a lot of the characters in Genshin Impact tend to talk a lot like an NPC, even characters that are supposed to be kinda playful, like someone like Hu Tao could go on and on and on about exposition. And for me personally, he do she doesn't talk like a regular human being, regardless of like what motif they were trying to do. But for Aether, you can definitely see that, in a way, he talks like how we would normally talk. Like, if someone is on your ass, you're just going to go, dude, please shut up. And I really appreciate that. The dialogue writing in Genshin Impact has been known to be very tedious and long. Like, a lot of people are joke about John Lee saying a lot, but if you look at characters like Saint Cho, Kazuha, they tend to go on and on on these monologues. So it's really nice to have a contradiction to that in the form of the protagonists that's not really saying anything. And one thing that I really like is that the Traveler tends to have an agenda and is pretty much morally gray. It was a weird aspect of the game that I didn't really appreciate, but I think, I've, I think I've said it before that I really like how he subverted expectations by being the first one to attack Senora. A lot of MC protagonists fall into the pit of Takuno Jutsu. And now a lot of people are going to say that, oh, well, technically we already had that with the I and A, but it's a good thing that the Traveler wasn't the one that actually tried to do it. Yes, the Traveler has been known to be quite of a pacifist sometimes, but you can definitely tell that the Traveler consistently is an agent of war. He was very angry towards Senora and was the first one to provoke the fight, and when you saw it with A and the ride in Shogun, he was willing to talk for a while, but when he saw that she wasn't budging, he was willing to fight her. Same goes for Tartaglia when he knew that he was going to fight him. He didn't want to just back down from that, even though technically he and Tartaglia were in good terms. So it's a good subversion of expectations when you think that the Traveler is going to be the super righteous and the super stereotypical MC. Another aspect of the Traveler that I really like is that they're not a Mary Sue. From the very beginning, we already knew that they were going to be powerful. Like, they could use multiple elements, so at least that goes into the boundary. But we also don't see them completely overshadowing other characters. Now, a lot of MCs tend to do this, where a lot of characters do tend to get overshadowed and a lot of characters seem to be completely useless around the 
the main character, which I like to see isn't the case. For example, they needed to have a full party with Venti in order to stop Duval, and it wasn't just a one-man army. Uh, more subtle ones was Zhao catching him, Kazuha blocking the shot, and basically all the other playable characters also playing an important role. Chen Ha in the new Archon Quest was a very good example of he doesn't really have to overshadow anyone and he relies a lot on camaraderie. A lot of MCs tend to fall into this trap of just being the lone protagonist. And yes, the Inazuma Archon Quest can technically count as this because he's quote unquote the savior of this place. It was still done with the help of Kokomi and the other people, and I think that's a really nice touch. There's an, it's an important theme in Genshin Impact's ideals that you need your friends and that you need companions in order to survive. That was basically the mentality that was given to the travelers before they went to Devat. And I like that it is being shown in Genshin that we're not alone. We were never alone in the first place whenever we have to do a fight. I like that. I like that in a protagonist that's willing to look for help from others. And I like that the Traveler is having an impact in the world around them. Poorly written character will just render everyone completely worthless. I'm looking at you, Marinette from Ladybug. Another one I think that I really like about the Traveler is he just feels so unique in a way that he has active storytelling. I've said it before and I think I'll say it again from my stream. Lore versus active storytelling is very different. I think a good example of this was La Senora. La Senora's lore is very extensive, but her active storytelling basically renders her as just a pretty lady that kicked Venti. It was an unfortunate circumstance what happened to her, and that's why I really like the Traveler's story. One of the reasons why a lot of the playable characters don't seem to be doing that much or haven't raised the stakes when it comes to the regular story or the Archon quests or whatnot is because we're expected to already know about their histories. Every character comes with five character stories that talk about their past and usually they have a story quest or they have like a supplementary material like the hangouts. The Traveler doesn't get that. The Traveler needs to show himself as a good character by actively being in the plot, and that's something that really differentiates him from most of the characters. The writing for the Traveler needs to be an active voice because we don't have the luxury of relying. For example, for Venti, we are aware that he's the god. We are aware of the certain things that he has done in the past. Why? Because there is lore behind that. We know as a player that he's really strong, that he terraformed the apple something something island, and then he was part of the Archon War. But when you look at his active storytelling, there isn't much to work with. He's just a bard that helped with the Valen and then kinda helped around with the Windbloom Festival. But we don't really see any of that lore truly translated. But we still have the idea that this guy is really powerful and this guy is important because of his lore. But the Traveler doesn't get that. The Traveler doesn't get the cool lore in the background to show that he's a really strong and powerful individual. Instead, we get really active storytelling where we are shown that he's a strong entity. It's not flashbacks and that's what makes them different. Out of all my criticisms for Genshin Impact Story, I will never ever disregard the care that they are putting for the Traveler Twins. I think that the story of the Traveler Twins are so much deeper than what the community is giving them credit for. I think that it is easy to disregard the Travelers, but for me, just personally, I guess just after so many lore stuff that I've been reading, it's a small sarcasm bit so that they really shine. Their dialogue and their personality and their appearance and their voice line whenever they are they do say anything. I think that's what I really like about them. I think that they should just keep on doing what they like to do with the travelers. I don't think that they have to do anything else. <laughs> The only thing that they can probably do is like unite the twins and that's it. And yeah, there you go. I'm a traveler simp. I really like Aether's story and I really like his personality. I think that he, against all of the other characters, is super sarcastic and does not hold back his tongue. He is really funny and honestly, all the facial marketing budget probably went to his expressions and I can respect that. Thank you everyone and my name is Aster and thank you for chilling with me.